from the fantasy armchair, it is the Fantasy Tyrant. Hey there, fellow fantasy football freaks. Welcome back to the Fantasy Armchair. As you can see here, I'm already in London. I took a little break from my U.S. tour to hop across the pond to see the Dolphins and Jaguars play in person. Come on, just humor me. I want to apologize because not only is this late, it's not even benches and bumps. So you gotta be like, what the fuck, Tyron? What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. I've had to get new equipment for the computer. I ran out of hard drive space. I've been dealing with a lot of fucking bullshit with that. And the internet that we had was running at 150th of what it was supposed to be. So I've been dealing with bunk ass internet. I had to wait to get shit installed. My internet was down for two days. On top of that, I got some family shit to deal with. I got an 18 year old son who thinks he knows everything and can do no wrong. Meanwhile, I'm just a dumbass who can't do shit. If you raise the kid to adulthood, I'm sure you know my pain. And I don't even have to explain what I'm going through. All of that took way too much time. I can't do the benches and bumps today. However, I do have some rankings for you, and these are usually exclusive to Patreon members. So here's a little bit of taste of what you can get by becoming a super freak. So we'll take a look at that, and I'll tell you a little bit more about each player that I have ranked higher or lower than normal. But for something more in-depth, and to get your usual benches and bumps, this Sunday, 6.30 a.m. Pacific, 9.30 a.m. Eastern, it's the three-hour Think the Stink the Power Hour live watch party where we're all gonna watch the early morning game together between the Dolphins and the Jags. Meanwhile, I'll be doing my usual shtick, right? You'll hear some banter as you watch the game. I'll answer your questions. I'm gonna go over injury updates, weather reports, streaming defenses, streaming kickers, my deep dives of the week. Plus, I'm gonna answer all your burning questions. And on top of that, at halftime, I'm gonna do a very special live benches and bumps, which of course is like a sit and start but better. So you'll get your benches and bumps and everything you normally would in the Tinker Stinker Power Hour over three hours as we watch the London game together. So if nothing else, come see me tomorrow morning. And real quick, smash the like button. Smash subscribe. We need 500 subscribers before the end of the month if you want me to give you another little something good. Speaking of which, we got the grand prize giveaway still and if you want 11 entries into that, Sign up on my Patreon today, and you could win a Stitch jersey of your favorite player. So look at the link in the description for more details. Well, let's move on. I just am doing my rankings. It looks like I'm bringing back the ranking show. And if you join up on Patreon and follow my ranks, it's straight money for you. So I'm going to call this one Money in the Rank. Let's start off with the running backs. Austin Eckler is in a hell of a matchup, and he's in a hell of an offense. So I think that he's going to have a hell of a game. That's simple. CMC has been rolled out, so move Chuba Hubbard up to the top 20. JT versus the suck-ass Texans? Yeah, give me all of that. Dude's on fire. Harris is too, and you'll keep it up going against the bitch pigeons of Seattle. Derrick Henry's always a must start, but the Bills are nearly impenetrable against the run. Start him, but with caution. Swift is bordering on Studville, and Gibson shook off whatever was holding him back this year, because he's a star again now. Aaron Jones keeps losing work to A.J. Dillon, and Chicago doesn't give up much business to begin with. Henderson has been hot, too, and the Giants aren't, so I like him in that matchup. The Rams are actually suspect against the run this season, and I like Booker's chance in place of Saquon. We already saw what Fournette did, and Williams could be a steal in DFS in this game against Washington. It actually appears that Cook's going to play, so take Madison out and put Cook in the top five. I think Joe Mixon's still hurt, and he's losing touches to Geo. I have him down a bit. Zach Moss continues his push to take over the Bills' backfield, and a good matchup against the Titans to do it. The Denver D is stout defending the run, so if he can sit Josh Jacobs, I would. Damian Harris faces the fantasy fiesta of the Dallas D, so I bumped him up a skosh. Chase Edmonds keeps getting vultured, plus now he's banged up, so expect a lot more from Connor this week. We saw Sanders fail already, and Alex Collins is going to get the start, but I don't like him against the Steelers anyway. Pollard's going to be fine, but against the Pats, he won't be great. So for him, that makes him sittable. Move Khalil Herbert up to where I had Damian Williams here, since he's out with COVID. A lot's happened since I did these ranks, I guess. Singletary is losing too much to Moss for me to start, and that's okay, because I love Moss. Chuba Hubbard moves up with CMC out, like I said earlier. Ahmed could break a big run for a touchdown in this game. Just watch. Drake against Denver? No thanks. 
And Ramondre Stevenson might actually get some decent play against the fantasy fiesta of the Dallas D. Could be a sneaky one. Moving on to wide receivers, if Scary Terry starts, he starts for your fantasy squad. Dude's a bit studly, what can I say? Burrow to chase against the Perrinkins of Detroit? Give me some of that. In fact, give me all of that. I had a feeling AB was going to be the guy this time for the Tampa Bay Pass game. Maybe Godwin next time? Do it next week to find out. Luke Hopkins has been mediocre by his standards this season, and I don't see that improving here against the Browns. Speaking of Browns, A.J. Brown is drowning in crap in that anemic Titans offense. Sad to see. Maybe Julio coming back helps by taking coverage off of A.J. We'll see, but I'm not banking on it. Chase Claypool is a good start with Juju out against Seattle. Cooper's losing his spot to Lamb and Schultz. He's not fed enough to get a nod in that offense against the New England Pats D. Bobby Trees finally woke up. Cool. Let's see him do it again. Jacoby Myers is the only wide receiver I'm interested in for the Pats, and I'm excited to watch him feast on the fantasy fiesta of Dallas. Thielen started off hot, but quickly fizzled out. Kind of like the first time you have sex with a new partner. It's awkward, but you roll through it and hope it gets better. Lockett has been hurt, and the Steelers' D is going to keep him contained. Metcalf, not so much. Let's see if Kadarius Tony is who we thought he was, or just more fool's gold. Can't trust anyone on the Texans, and now that includes Brandon Cooks. Mills is too volatile. Van Jefferson will take another step forward and secure his spot next to Cup and Woods in the three Ramigos. Christian Kirk still doesn't have a real solid spot in the Cards offense. Too unknown to start unless you're in deeper leagues. Why do I got Aguilar here? Because I love starting players against Dallas. What can I say? Straight money. Robbie Anderson has fallen out of favor in this offense, and so he falls down my list. Adam Humphreys could be the wide receiver one for Washington if Scary Terry is out, so move him up if he is. Marvin Jones is too hit and miss, and the Dolphins D is pretty good. I see a real grinded out kind of game here. Marvin Jones keeps wanting to be a thing, but I still don't think he is. St. Brown could be the next flavor of the week for Detroit. Let's see how much work he gets against Cincinnati. Paris Campbell's moving up and Wentz trusts, so he's moving up in my ranks. Quez Watkins is showing some promise, and to round it out, Cobb could beast or just be a decoy. Let's see how that goes. Now let's talk about my top 25 quarterbacks. Joe Burrow must be salivating at the prospect of playing against the Lions. I would be. Rodgers should be fine. I just think they run a little more to win this game. Not as much Rodgers needed for this one. Taylor Heineke has been a shocker sleeper this season. And he goes up against the Chiefs who have become the new fantasy fiesta. Move over, Dallas. The Fiesta has moved north to KC. Speaking of Dallas, the boys travel to New England, and the Patriots' D is basically all the Pats have. Belichick will be sending dudes to smash Dak's grill all game. Be cautious with him there. We saw Tom Brady already have that mediocre game I predicted. Trevor Lawrence will be showcasing his rookie talents in jolly old England as we watch him take apart the Dolphins' D together. He's gotten better pretty much every week, and I have a feeling he puts it together here. Kirk Cousins was putting up top 10 numbers earlier in the season, but now he's pulling a Derek Carr and is shit in the bed just when you thought he was solid enough to start regularly. Carson Wentz and his cavalcade of crap take on the bullshit brigade themselves, the Houston Texans. Wentz has actually been a serviceable and less volatile QB this season, so I like him putting up 20 plus fantasy points here in a softball matchup which means he and the fantasy gods are probably just going to piss in our collective faces, so only start Wentz if you haven't any other good options or need a desperation play. Sam Darnold has been a revelation this year, but I think he takes a step back in this one. Tannehill faces Buffalo. Nuff said. Sit him down if you can. Big Ben is big hurt, but he gets an opportunity here to knock off the rust and give us a good one at home against the rainy city bitch pigeons. I like him here, but in super deep or two QB leagues only. Derek Carr proved that he's still the bed shitter we thought he was. And this week, Captain Guyliner takes on the stout-ass Denver D, who swallows up QBs to the tune of the second fewest fantasy points allowed to the position this season. Not a fan of Carr in this one. And Mac Jones is on the rise a bit. He's looking better as he gets his NFL legs under him. And this week he gets the Dallas D, and yeah, they're not quite the feast they used to be, but they're still a tasty matchup. Sneaky start here. Now for the tight ends. Dawson Knox has been one of my best calls this season, calling him asleep a superstar before the season even began, noting his offseason bromance with Josh Allen. Tennessee sucks against tight ends, so that one's a no-brainer. 
Hunter Henry is gonna feast on those aforementioned tasty cowboys who suck on a truck stop hooker level at defending against tight ends. He's been the security blanket for Mac Jones, so I see him having a big game here. Ricky Seals Jones was my double deep danger dive last week. And yeah, that sure paid off. Helped me win a little cash in DFS. And if you start him this week with the pass catches so depleted for the football team and Scary Terry even banged up, I think RSJ gets the job done against the new fantasy fiesta of KC. Zach Ertz just got traded in the cards, but he still managed a good game on the Eagles before making that move. TJ Hawkinson has taken a major step back with Goff at the helm this season. Yeah, told you. I was the only guy saying not so fast on the Hawk hype this season. And Sunday, he goes up against the Bengals, who are actually stout on D this year, especially against tight end, where they rank in the top five. Move over, Jack Doyle. Mo Ali Cox is the new tight end of choice in Indy. Going against the craptastic Texans, this should be another good game for him. There was all this mysterious buzz surrounding David Njoku this season, and we're starting to see what that's about. I think he fully takes over as the top tight end for the Browns after Hooper has proven to be a dud. I think this all continues to surface despite a not great matchup on paper. Njoku's more like a wide receiver too to OBJ in that offense. I like him in this one. Jared Cook is gross, not even going to talk about him. Conklin is hit and miss against the souped up Panthers D, I see another miss. OJ Howard had a good game, Brait had no game, I kind of figured. Hooper's a dud, like I said. And yeah, Jack Doyle's still usable, because that's how bad the Texans are at everything. All right, so how about the defenses? Here you go. Not going to say too much about them here. It's pretty much whoever's got a decent defense going against a shitty team, and they get a green arrow. And whoever has a crappy D and is facing a potent offense, they get a red arrow. Take a look. I'll be covering streaming defenses on Sunday morning's show as well, so come see me then. And finally, kickers. Nothing to say here. Look at this list, pick up, and start accordingly. Not gonna waste my time or yours talking about kicker stats like I'm fucking Taco from the league. Just look and learn. I'll give you a sec. There you go, freaks. They're my rankings this week. You want my rankings every week? Sign up with me on Patreon. You'll find the link in the description. Plus, of course, if you sign up today, you get those 11 entries into the grand prize giveaway for a stitched jersey of your favorite player. Or whatever player you want, I don't give a shit. Not like I know who you like anyway, but whatever. Sign up there today. And please, hit like and subscribe if you can. I appreciate it. But if you don't do any of that, at least join me tomorrow morning. 6.30 a.m. Pacific, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. It's a three-hour Tinker Stink of Power Hour, London Game Watch Party Extravaganza. Let everyone know. Tell your neighbors, your friends, your dentist, your proctologist, although you probably don't like to talk to them very much. You're gonna get everything you normally get on the Tinker Stinker Power Hour. Of course, I'm gonna answer your burning questions. Plus, we're gonna have the half time benches and bumps. Tune in, you don't wanna miss it. What else are you gonna do that morning anyway but watch the Jags and the Dolphins make football look futile to the limey bastards in the UK? Come watch with me and have a great time instead. Anyway, hope to see you all then. Till then though, I'm out. Peace.